able to solo this one without too much trouble. It does, of course, mean, like you say, Impaler has just counted it, gone to the top. But Kubon's been up that top lane the whole time. He's managed to get himself a little advantage over Mimer. Looking down this bottom lane, you can see Mixer taking some damage already. It's going to be an explosive lane, this one, I feel, because both AD carries have got a lot of range, a lot of poke. And, of course, you can see Libic and my, uh, Mixer already looking to try and have a go at each other. Yeah, Libic and Makla have to be very careful. If they get caught by a hook from Mixer, the early damage burst from Lucian. Oh. That's the hook. There's the hook. He goes straight in, puts the flay, has to force the flash out. The chopper's going down. That's going to catch out Mixer as well, but the aggression on Libic will be first blood. It's Mr. Rales who finally got in the game and gets himself a kill. They cannot allow themselves to get caught like that. Libic is too squishy as Annie in this early game, even with that Doran shield. This is 3.15, and the, the burst from Lucian, even though it's taken a small hit, is still very, very high. And if Mixer and Mr. Ross can keep doing that, it's just going to be a rinse and repeat, and they can get themselves an early lead. Absolutely fantastic start. Super hot crew, pressure on, and, and I got to importantly stress this, Meet Your Makers are a team that do not handle pressure on them early. If they start losing the towers, start losing the lanes, it's very rare that they come back from it. Well, we'll see how it works out for them. is going on moops. Well, he just dashes away from that cocoon. Makata, of course, with that double buff. Mixer just warding out that river, throws out the hook. Not going to happen. Actually, he did ward it out. He just had a wander up there, it felt, because uh, the ward has been cleared out already, it seems. Yeah, they had no idea where Makata was up until that gank. So at the moment Makata showed himself in the mid lane, uh, Mixer immediately started trending back down, just going back into lane. And it was basically playing a human ward, making sure that he gets as much information as possible. And in this early stage, the CS numbers are still sitting very, very close. But I think one of the, the mashups that I'm interested to see how it plays out is this Cubon versus Mimer, Shivana versus Dr. Mundo. Depending on how Cubon itemizes, depends on how this lane is going to play out. If he does go for that sort of aggressive Blade of the Rune King, he can actually beat Dr. Mundo in lane and can become a, a fairly strong split pusher with all that additional attack speed. And with, with axes being thrown out like that, or choppers, or whatever you'd like to come from Mima, I don't think Cubon needs to be too worried because that was miles off the mark. <laughs> of course, we do see a little gank down this bottom lane in Pilot just. Showing his presence, it's not enough to worry them too much, so they back away from that one. We can see, of course, Makata trying to counter that, heading towards the top lane, and see if he can maybe get something started on Mima. Well, we'll have to see. He does have uh, that cocoon available and missed it the last time round. Moops is able to body slam away. And I think Makata just going to hang out at the moment. He is within experience range, so going to be able to at leech, be able to leech some of that. He has hit level four. And I think Mimus, Mimus is aware of this. He's playing very, very defensive. He's just relying on those infective cleavers to last hit. And I think it's just going to be wasted time for Makata as he realizes that and backs away. For anyone listening, that is just the cue. <laughs> infected cleavers. That is the word, of course. I'm going to miss Trevor when he's not here, I tell you. I get, I get to learn so much from the names, the spell names at least, <laughs> let's put it that way, of course. As I mentioned before, this is the 3.15 patch, so anything you guys at home are playing is live right now. We are playing exactly what you would be seeing at home. And if you guys are playing games while watching this, of course, and we always welcome that because well, I like to do that myself. The one thing I would like to highlight as well is that as it is 3.15, Yasuo is available. He wasn't picked or banned in this matchup. Mm -hmm. And we have been seeing a lot of the pro teams actually spamming him a lot in solo queue. So I'd like to see if he's going to feature in the series. It is a best of three. And I don't know if anybody from Super Hot Crew OMOM have been practicing him. But I, I am expecting him to feature next week during our regular season uh, LCS games. Yeah, we'll see how that develops, of course. That'll be starting on Tuesday. One of these teams will be in that. The third match of the day up against Rockat, who formerly are KMT, if you'd have seen them qualifying through. Another Polish team. Could we have an all Polish matchup right there? If Meteor Makers get themselves in there, we certainly will. And Poland won't know which way to go when that happens <laughs> because right now they are cheering on Meteor Makers to get in here. Super hot crew though, they proved themselves very much a team to beat up against SK Gaming earlier on. They only need really the experience of Candy Panda and Nif were able to turn that game around. Yeah, that is for sure. And we'll have to see how well they can react to this one. A very good well-timed ward from Makla is going to allow them to back away. And of course, there's no Assault and Battery, no ultimate there from Impaler's Vi, so he's not going to be able to jump on anybody and lock them down. But one thing that Libic is doing a little bit smarter this time around, he's sitting with his passive stun available on Annie. So what that means is if Mixer and Mr. Rolls want to go in at all, they have to deal with that stun. They're well aware that the CC is available, and it just dissuades you from going very aggressive, dissuades you from landing the death sentence and following up, because you're going to get instantly locked in place. 
Well, so far the lanes are actually starting to slowly grind in towards Meteor Maker's favor. You can see, of course, the gold is just a couple of hundred gold difference. There was that first blood that came down, but look at the CS between them. It's about a 10 CS lead in every single lane, starting to slowly claw an advantage. I think this is a situation that plays into MYM's favor. Game one of the series, dealing with the pressure, having gone through promotion, uh, you know, a couple times already, having played together on very big stages multiple times in their very storied history, their nerves aren't necessarily going to be as on edge. And I think Super Hot Crew, the first blood definitely takes the edge off, but I still think they need to just settle down, breathe, maybe get some of that adrenaline out of their system, and then make sure they're landing all those last hits and making the plays they need to. You know, Impaler, he's tried to gank multiple times, but he hasn't necessarily made it work for him. Did we just see... Did Shimano go around and get the red buff? I just wanted to see whether she did or not. Did look. not. Went round towards it. Didn't actually pick it up, though. Kuban, who has started to develop a lead over Mimer in that top lane. Red buff wasn't available, I believe, because I think uh, Impaler already has it on. Nope, it's just, just on respawn. there right now. Just, just respawn. respawn. So obviously went looking for it. So yeah. already starting to make those plays. Kuban trying to look for some aggression, realizing he's pushing the lane pretty heavily. You can see already just wiped out that wave, shoved it straight on towards Mimer. Whenever you play a Shivana, especially in the early game, you know, before 10 or 12 minutes, in a 1v1 matchup, you've got very, very good wave clear. Even though Dr. Mundo does have that burning agony, his own W, that's fairly good for lowering the wave. It's not <laughs> as fast. I'm trying to keep you up, you know, trying to keep you up I'm to just, date. Just, yeah. I'm just watching the, the standoff <laughs> in the middle there. <laughs> it's a very slow Moop, start. Moops and Sharu just staring at each other. Moops just tanking out that one single minion, looking at each other. It's like, no, I'm not being baited into hitting that one minion. I'm just going to stand at range. Moops is falling behind. I mean, Moops in the mid lane, he's 10 CS down. He. He doesn't have a very big minion wave in front of him, and I think he's just playing very, very passively. You know, uh, it, it's better to lose a little bit of CS and not give up any kills than it is to get caught out, get shut down, and give your opponent an, an early advantage. And I'm actually quite surprised with that first blood that we've seen from Mr. Rawls and Mixer that they haven't gone more aggressive earlier. You know, they had that early advantage, but it hasn't been converted to anything. Neither AD carry has gone back to spend the money. Neither of them has actually earned or picked up any uh, aggressive statistics. It's a it's lot of money. There's the ward place, of course, from Super Hot Crew. They had it in the jungle. They saw um, Makata going past. They know that he's on the blue buff. I'm wondering whether Impaler is now going to go aggressive down this bottom lane, whether he's going to come towards there. They know that the jungler is not there. They know they've got a three on two advantage. And actually, it looks like they may transition into a dragon instead. So they've got the numbers advantage and they have the teleport advantage as well. So if a fight were to break out, Mima would be able to join. Now, I don't know if we're going to see Makla being cheeky with a super mega death rocket. And doesn't look like it. And he tippers us down. Tippers down there. Mega death rocket did come down. That's going to be one kill. Oh, he flashed away. Got, got hooked straight in by the death sentence from Mixer. And that will be super hot crew cleaning up. And they got the dragon as well. So the gold all went their way. Got the dragon. The fight went one for one. They traded a jungler for support. And I think that, you know, Makla tried to steal it with his ultimate. Didn't necessarily work out. And Libic just going a touch too early. The Tibbers was well placed, but there was nothing else to follow it up. You need the shockwave. You need Shivana diving in, or even Elise in that situation. And unfortunately for MYM, they now fall about a thousand gold behind and they give another kill away. This time to Moops' Gragas. And that kill, of course, means that Mr. Rylas has completed and picked up the Bloodthirster going down to that bottom lane. We see what Makla goes for. He's making his first trip back as well. Had got himself a little CS advantage, but of course the kill and assist will certainly give the gold in the way of Mr. Rallas. And you can see, well, he's at 3k, so he's going to go straight and buy... Almost Didn't a Bloodthirster. Get the bloodthirster. <laughs> Almost a Bloodthirster. So that little bit of a CS advantage is keeping him close. And I think he's opted to just pick up... A little bit of wards there. He's got some potions in his back pocket. And we also see that with these first backs, both supports have picked themselves up that sweeping lens. Moved away from the warding trinket. and going to start denying vision from their opponents. Remember that this is 3.15. In case you need a quick refresher, the cooldown on that sweeping lens has been dropped by a full minute at rank 1 and then 30 seconds at ranks 2 and 3. So it just allows you to sweep more wards more often. And of course, it does mean we, we tend to see a little bit more pink games in 3.15. Kubon, you can see he's gone that build toward a cutlass, so may well be going for that Blade of the Rune King early on. Meanwhile, Mime up playing in towards the uh, 
I'm having a brain fart. It's the the the, 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 the spirit massage. Spirit massage. Sorry, I was looking all over and I'm like, who is Mima? Where is Mima? <laughs> Camera talking <laughs> and questions. Trying to do so that much. Was, I'm like spectral cloud. That He's was the information envelope. But look I know at this. What this is. Impaler snuck in from behind. He does have assault and battery available. Was Ooh. thinking about going in. And remember, it's guaranteed CC. Tibbers is there as well. So as long as Super Hot Crew are in sync and make this work, they can get a kill. Same is happening in the top, though. He's going to go around. I think it's going to be Makla. No, Libic will be the target. Does manage to get the Assault Battery. He does get Tibbers down, but it's a little too late. Is it? No! The tower damage comes in and Paler gets away. The minions are hitting him, but I don't think it's going to be enough. He manages to get away from that one. Meanwhile, in the top lane, my man's getting caught. Shockwave pulls in. Mixer's going to go down. It's a straight trade one for one. And the tower on the top lane and it's Meet Your Makers coming out on top. Yeah, Meet Your Makers with a very good play overall. They lost a member of their team, but they do manage to secure themselves a tower in the top lane, and it's not over yet as they continue to focus down the lane. The attack damage that Cubon's getting allows him to kill those minions even quicker, and the presence of Makate makes Mima's defensive play very, very difficult to read. He could have teleported bottom, but decided against it, and instead he's going to defend the top lane. Well, meanwhile, in the mid lane, you can see there are actually three uh, members all possibly going to try and close in here. We do have Kubon and Makata heading in towards him. Libic has made himself in towards that mid lane as well, so we'll see if they try and go for a gank on Moops. They've gone a little bit too early here. Moops himself was trying to get the wards down. He's going to walk away from that one, no problem at all. Yeah, talking about wards, the vision here from Super Hot Crew is significantly superior to that of Meteor Makers. They've got a lot more vision in the in the river and around the entrances to the map. MOM has got very good red buff coverage from the side of Super Hot Crew. So as this buff is now spawned, in theory, MOM could have challenged for it, but they've all decided to back away. So it does look like Impala should be able to pick this one up mostly uncontested. Oh, you say that, Libby comes along and throws two big wards down that bottom lane. It's like, oh, I, I hear what you're saying, Trevor, yep. and I'm going to clear them, fix this problem straight away. So Libic making sure he gets that covered off, of course. Metaphorically speaking, they can't actually hear what we're saying because there is a rather large delay on this stream. Meanwhile, though, Libic getting caught out down the bottom. There's going to be the box. That will be a death once again. He's 1-4-1 one one now. He's being oh, picked on. What a great death sentence on towards Makla. They're going to try and take this one out. You can see the culling coming straight out there. Is it going to be enough? Barrier being used. Can't quite tank it back. Meanwhile, Moops is going to get aggressed upon. Elise has to repel away from that one. And it's Super Hot Crew with the kill. Yeah, Elise, Makata just got bursted out there as he ran into Moops. And Moops unloaded a full con. But Mima, his first teleport to the game, as I flick to him, he teleports away and manages to secure some great kills and a lot of tower damage in this bottom lane. Mr. Rolls and Mixer can stick around, secure the tower, even it up one to one, and then they can make their way back to push other lanes, maybe to get even more towers or objectives. Very good play from Super Hot Crew, and it's something that we've seen them doing multiple times. Oh, wrong button. That's the one I want. <laughs> multiple times throughout the spring promotion uh, qualifier. Their decision making and their team cohesion is really what stood out against SK, but it was all led by Impaler's Vi in the mid game. So 2,000 gold lead, 5-2 up in kills, all square, one apiece in the towers, the top and the bottom towers going down. And we always see some lane shuffling. We do see Vi already just going straight back to that blue. That means Gragas is going to be getting that one. That would be Moops for Super Hot Crew. Meanwhile, Blue Buff, you can see, is also up. Charu heading that way. He's going to be picking that up. Top laners actually staying in the top. And duo lanes staying down the bottom. So I think we're going to see Meteor Makers trying to put pressure on. But they may be running headlong into Impaler. I think what Super Hot Crew could have been doing this time around was pushing the top lane tower. I think if they'd stuck their duo up there, it could have allowed them to do it. Instead, though, they want to go for the gank. We'll keep our eyes on Impaler as Assault and Battery is available, uh -oh. and Makla's going down. Makla getting caught out there, a dash, a death sentence, a hook pulled in, and Impaler didn't even need to use Assault and Battery there. That was as clean a kill as you can get. No, it was just super easy. They, they completely caught Makla out of position, zoned him out, and then once he was zoned, there was nothing he could do about it. So Super Hot Crew give themselves their sixth kill of the game, and it was just before Dragon came up. So now they're clearing out the wards, setting up the Ring of Vision, and they're going to have the numbers advantage when they start this Dragon off, as you can see. Keep an eye on the Super Mega Death Rocket as Makla has respawned and it's available. It could be used in this fight. Meteor Makers ready to try and counter this one. They have good vision. They have everything ready to go, but the question is, will they do it? There's the Repel, he comes in. It's going to be too late, though. Impaler already locking that one up. Makata's going to get caught out. So, Dragon and a kill for the Super Hot Crew. And the Shockwave hit nobody. 
The Shockwave didn't hit a single target there. Charu was trying to be very cheeky and hide over the wall, just using the ball for presence, and it wasn't in range of anybody from the Super Hawk crew, and that's allowed them to uh, extend that gold lead and now have a massive numbers advantage. Mix is coming in from Vine. He's caught Kubon. Great hook straight in there. Kubon in trouble. He tries to get away, but he gets pulled straight back in immediately. Brilliant stuff from Super Hawk crew, and it was Impaler landing that song battery. The culling coming out. That's not going to find his target. It doesn't matter. It's the Where turret they want to go there for. Go. Where are you going, Trevor? I don't know. <laughs> you are making the cameraman's job at League of Legends Championship Series very good right now because they know they have no threat from you. They are fantastic and is the reason I talk for a living and don't drive the camera, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry about that one. But yes, another great play. More kills on the board for Super Hot Crew and it, it's just a positional advantage. They had the numbers, they got a kill, they converted the kill to the tower and there was absolutely nothing MYM could have done about that. I think MYM should have made the decision to back away, move away from the tower, give it up and not give even more kills. You've got Mr. Rolls, 6-0-2. He's picked himself up a, uh, a sweeping lens to return to lane because I think the next few minutes, Super Hot Crew just going to be spending all of their time in MYM's jungle and on MYM's side of the map. He, he's already close to being a full Trinity force ahead of Makla. That's, that's pretty worrying already. He's already going to see it's a... 2,000 and uh, almost a 2,000 gold lead, uh, 1,500 gold so far. But you can see he's just wiping out their minion waves, no problem. Mr. Riles chunking out that gold, and he's going to be a serious, serious problem for them to deal with. He's already just managed to zone them out completely. 5,000 now the gold lead for the Super Hot Crew. Great start for them, and I talked about it at the beginning. Meteor Makers, they really struggle to come from behind. If they do get those towers early on, they start pushing a vision. It works so well for them, but they're a team that just doesn't come back. We're hoping they managed to figure something out in the break. This is a ticking time bomb right now. You know, uh, Meteor Makers, they need to make sure that they don't... That, that they need to stop hemorrhaging gold and stop hemorrhaging kills, and they have to slow things down, keep this gap at 5,000 for the next 5 or 10 minutes when it becomes significantly less. Right now, it's a big amount. But at 25 and 30 minutes, it's less impactful, and they'll have the power to win a team fight. But if they keep making bad dragon calls, and very, very importantly, if they keep giving up dragons uncontested, that is how they're going to lose this game. So we'll see how this next dragon uh, turns out as it does respawn probably in the next three and a half, four minutes time. And that's the time when MYM has to make a move, have to have better vision and have to make some plays. Right now, Super Hot Crew, once again, uncontested tower. They're grouping up. They're going to have a three man and this should be their third tower of the game. Meanwhile, my mate, yeah, say chunking down that tower. They are setting up. They're going to come around. Kubon tried to set himself up, but Assault Battery says no. Explosive Cask is available. If he just needs to knock him back, will he use it to explode him? No, Impaler's going to pick up the kill anyway. They're going to be able to trade towers. Mix Whoa. has gone in. Flash box straight down. They're culling coming out on towards Makana, doing a heck of a lot of damage. Has to repel from the, the death sentence coming out there in the game. Well, Super Hot Crew defend that tower successfully. They take themselves the tower in the top. It's three to one now. All going Super Hot Crew's favor. Yeah, that's for sure. Right now, he's going to at least be evened up a tiny bit for Meecha Makers. It's not over yet. Lubick's in trouble. Well, you see, he's. Oh, Mr. Here comes Mima. Aggressive teleport comes in. He's going to be popping that ultimate. He's already used it. He's got flash available if he needs to close the gap. Oh, Libic catches that chopper straight to the face. Easy pickup for Mr. Rallis. Flash from Mima. No, oh, straight into a cocoon. And that's going to put an end to that. So that's going to give an assist to Mima at the very least. Not necessarily the best trade for your teleport, but it does allow them to get yet another kill onto Mr. Rallis. I think he should have enough gold now to finish up that Trinity Force and really, really start making Meet your maker's life difficult as if a 702 wasn't <laughs> difficult enough as it is. And that's exactly what we said Meet your makers can't afford to do. But look at the build items. Mixer, he's gone for the Warden's Mail. He's going full tank support. I mean, that means that as the Thresh player, he is planning on throwing himself right in there. It, this, there's a beautiful irony in his itemization right now because Libic himself used to build the Warden's Mail onto Randians of yeah. Frozen Heart during the summer split. It's something we've seen him do when Meet your makers was ahead few times they were ahead uh, and this time round with Mixer being in such a strong position at that 0, 1 and 9 he's going to get very beefy all of the physical damage of that you know uh, a Shivana and Jinx is going to be mitigated by the high armor count and it's just going to allow him to get away with cheeky engages he can pick fight after fight after fight and all of that durability is going to allow him to get away with not dying. Meanwhile Warm uh, Warmog's being picked up by uh, Mima 
If I can get my words out right, <laughs> uh, in that top lane, he's starting to become uh, a scary, scary beast, I believe it is, uh, Dr. Mondo. Mondo will be going where he pleases, of course. Kuban didn't go for that tanky start. Tanky approach will be going for the... Uh, the Spirit Visage shortly, but as it is right now, he went for what he needed. He went for what he needed to win the lane, but lane phase is over. Lane phase yeah. is done with, and Kubon, he's not got that tanky presence to dive in yet. So what it's going to come down to with these two different builds, Mima's going to be basically unkillable. There's no percentage HP damage on the side of Meteor Makers right now. The Morella Nomicon will help as, when, and if Mima gets below 40% HP, where his healing will be reduced. But if you're spending a lot of time focusing Dr. Mundo down, then Impaler, Moops, and Mr. Riles will clean you up. So there's difficult decisions for MYM, and they need to make sure they catch out Super Hot Crew around a corner and blindly if they want to win a big team fight. Well, that dragon will be up in 10 seconds' time, and that is what these teams are beginning to maneuver for. You can see a lot of wards being thrown down there, a lot of uh, checking out to remove those wards, of course, because you can see that now, actually, looking at it, Mr. Rallis has changed his uh, trinket. Yeah, we'll see how that works out. He's had it for a little while, in fact, and it's mostly just because of how far ahead Super Hot Crew are. Meet your makers, I think, realizing how far they are behind and not having vision, they didn't even challenge for that dragon. And remember, that dragon gets more valuable the higher the average level of the game. So. They cannot afford to keep doing this. Meteor Makers needs more vision, needs more wards, and they need to make you know some sort of challenges. Otherwise, we're just going to see a slow grind, much like how um, uh, KMT now Rocket actually defeated the Ninjas in Pajamas. You know, slow, passive, wait till 35 minutes on the clock, and then just finish the game. Is Cubon ooh, almost caught out? Moment, almost went in there, but again, like you say, they're still just biding their time here. Looking down the top and the bottom lane, neither really lane up pushing each other. Nobody's gone up there to clean it out. They're just sieging out this middle turret. Super Hot Crew feeling they are strong enough right now to bully them away. Shockwave comes out, but it's Mr. Rather is the only person they catch. It does take him pretty low, but it's enough that he can just walk away from that one. The mobility that he has, no boots, by the way, for Mr. Rallis yet still. He's gone for that Trinity Force Bloodthirster, doesn't need it. Does Instead, oh, Libic, they were going to go for. So he does have his Berserker's Greaves, luckily, but they're hidden oh, there I'm between a door and shield <laughs> and a long sword. Um, the main thing is, even with all the damage he just took, from the Wraith camp alone, he's already up to two-thirds HP, three-quarters HP. So there you go, max HP. That Those ultimates chained together, the Shockwave as well as the Super Mega Death Rocket, felt like a little bit of desperation. I don't know if they were just mm. feeling out how much damage they have. Impaler's hanging around the side. They will tower dive this. Impaler's the man we're going to keep our eyes on because he can just lock somebody down and that'll be a kill for the Super Hot crew if they go in. The culling being used to force them away. Barrel landed nicely. Makla took half his hit points off there and they're just beating down that turret. Mr. Ral is tanking it out a little bit there. That will be the inner turret going down and they're going to continue pushing through. Explosive cast being used. That just forces Libic away and that's going to be the end of the Super Hot crew siege. But it's enough. They're done. It's 4-2 in turrets. The one thing that was playing into Mitchell Maker's favor is that they had very, very big waves pushing against them both in the top and bottom lane. So it does mean that Super Hot Crew are unable to stick around, unable to continue their offensive, recalling, going to deal with these waves, spend a lot of the money that they've just earned, and then once again start the siege. If you know your opponent's Shockwave and, and Mega Death Rocket are down, if the ultimates are not available, you can win that team fight, and that's all Super Hot Crew are going to wait for. So those two waves being chunked straight down. Mr. Riles wiping that one out. You can see now 230 CS just close. Oh, this is desperation. Desperation Baron move. Yeah, definitely the case. Mimus hanging around. Impaler's going to do the best he can to close the gap. It is dropping very, very quickly. They're going to get Baron. They're going to get the Baron. Will they be able to clean it up though? Mima already popping his ultimate. He's going to try and come around. He's trying to separate someone. Kubon's the one they attacked to target right. there. A great shockwave catching through evil, but they're just not the damage to follow it up. Mima stood in between the whole team. Assault battery catching through. He goes on towards Charu. A lot of damage still coming back out though. Makla managing to pick up one. That's going to be the Impaler going down. Explosive cast comes around the back side of them. But look in the back there. Mr. Raleigh's just, just tagged. Tanking through the lot of them, getting that life steal going. And that is a 3-4-1 fight exchange there. Meteor Makers, even with the Baron, can't fight. Man of the fight is Moops, coming in a little bit late there, using that explosive cast to knock all the members of Meteor Makers back into the team of Super Hot Crew. And we talked about how important that tankiness of Mixer was going to be. He gets out of that fight with a couple hundred hit points, stuck around for such an immense amount of time. And MYM, they didn't have the damage to kill Super Hot Crew as quickly as they killed Baron because I was surprised at how quickly they took that objective down. But unfortunately for them, it just uh, wasn't enough to help them win that team fight. And now 
They've closed the gold gap a little bit, but it still feels like they're very, very, very far behind. Well, it is 9,000 gold. That I, some might argue that is quite a distance when it is only a 45k to 36k. Of course, the wit being picked up by Sharu or White, whatever we want to call it. Wit White. It's a spectral to me. That's where it is. A wraith. I've been. I'm from the old school of. There are too uh, many wraiths. The, the wraith. The wraith camp. Can I actually you drive? This is the wraith camp. Let's mm. drive over here, and <laughs> this is the white camp. <laughs> it's, I never get to do exactly that. exactly the same thing. I mean, I know what it's, it kind of means the same thing as well. It's oh. just the whole history thing. Makla could get popped. If Makla had hung around, Moops has enough damage that he could just insta-gib him. But wisely, this time around, Makla's going to back away. Not going to get caught out. Moops is going to allow himself just to once again shove the wave down. And surprise, surprise, warding going down a minute and a half to go. So setting up those green wards, setting up the vision around Dragon, and Super Hot Crew are signaling their intent to get ready for the next Dragon pickup, which they've had complete control of. MYM haven't even had a sniff at that Dragon, really. Well, teleport available for Mime, which is why he's going along that top lane. While Super Hot Crew set up a uh, pressure for this bottom lane turret, that seems to be the next focus target. There's barrels, you can see, wiping them out. They're going to start taking advantage to starting to overrun the red buff area as well, while Mimer shoves the top lane. So. Right now, Meteor Makers, they are in desperation trouble. They went for that Baron, it worked out, they got the Baron. Unfortunately, they couldn't escape quick enough because there was a rather large Doctor in the form of Mundo pushing them out. Got himself a Randian's Omen now as well. So, you know, immense amount of HP, immense amount of survivability and tankability. And I don't think Charu's magical burst is going to be enough to even make a dent. Right now, Super Hot Crew realizing that Dragon's still a little while away. They're playing the wave game. Mima keeping top wave under control. Does have teleport like you've already <laughs> mentioned. And keep a close eye on Moops because Moops may try to be cheeky coming from the side. Use that cost to knock everybody into a box from Mixer. I think MYM have to be very careful of this. This could become a 5v4 if Super Haku wanted to dive. Yeah, Kubon would have to use his Dragon's Descent to interrupt. That's the only thing he's got to stop Mima from teleporting. Mima stepping back. They've got to be careful the moment he does that. But Dragon has spawned, which is why Super Haku have all stepped away. They're going to keep that Dragon advantage going. It will be 11,000 gold lead once they pick that up. It is a rather large deficit to come back from as they continue to just to farm their way to victory. Yep, Super Haku don't need to take risks right now. They wait for the opportune moment. I think what we'll see them doing is an extended siege, like we have seen out of them in that mid lane already. We've seen them planning out, uh, playing it patiently, playing it softly, and right now, seeing a little bit of uh, an overextended Cubot. He is going to need to back away. Tower's available, and Super Crew is going to pick this one up uncontested. Yeah, Mimus is going to tank this one out. Kubon realizing the situation, having to step away from it. They are going to come try and chase him for it. Have they got enough damage? Oh, I don't think they have. Ultimate pop from Mimus. He's going to turn and fight. Kubon in all sorts of trouble, just not taking enough shockwave lands. Very nicely, though. Limit getting taken down. Timbers was followed through, but look at that. Another double kill picked up by Mr. Rallis. They're going to continue driving through. Chopper being thrown on towards Makata. And again, it is all the Super Haku driving through. Makata taking another barrel. He's having to back away. They may go for the inhibitor turret here. A two for one plus the turret. And even with what seemed to be a good engage from Meteor Makers, they are simply do not have enough damage to make a dent here in Super Hot Crew. Emo MYM chasing through Makla, maybe getting a sniff of moves, maybe getting a sniff of the kill there, but we're just going to be able to back away thanks to that body slam of his. And, you know, it's, it's just a very desperate situation. If Cubon had maybe had the shockwave with his descent, shockwave with his dive, that could have been enough. But it wasn't to be, and unfortunately for your Meteor Makers, they continue to fall behind. 12,000 gold is the difference now. Keeps growing. A couple thousand gold more, a couple thousand gold more. They're down three towers, they're down about four dragons. They do have a Baron to their name, but the buff was lost by three of the members very quickly thereafter. And you've got to say, you know, we, we talked about it at the start, how much a, a, a change of player may affect you. 10-0-4, not a bad change, I think. I think it's a bit of an upgrade. Yes. I think you can say that, and that's uh, maybe a little overly harsh because Haydel did play phenomenally well during the spring promotion tournament, but this roster substitution is working in their favor. Right now, though, Mima still playing the split push game. He does have that teleport still available to him. He's now got himself yet another Spectre's Cal, so more MR has been added to his list. Going to get himself most likely a Banshee's Veil. And, I, I mean, I still think he's unkillable already. With the Banshee's on top, I really don't think there's anything that Meteor Makers can do can, to deal with him. So even if they focus down Moops, even if they focus down Mr. Riles, Mima's just going to play cleanup crew and, you know, pit, help Super Hot Crew get their first victory in this best of three. So let's see how this develops next in a turret. 
Doing it by the numbers here. Meteor Makers trying to charge in. They're going aggressive. He's going to tank it through. Makata was the target, but Kubon found himself caught in the middle of really a place that he did not want to be. Both of these members can actually tank the turret, don't forget, because it's a Rani and Oma for Mixer as well. He's got plenty there. See the defensive ball coming straight in. Didn't want to get caught out with the shockwave. Yeah, two things to keep your eyes on. Just how little defensive stats is sitting with Mokate right now. Spirit of the Ancient Golem and a little bit of HP from Haunting Guys. In comparison to Impaler, who's got his locket completed, plus that Spectre's Cowl and the Ancient Golem. Now Mokate jumping on some moves, getting some good poke down. But that's a perfect distraction to allow Mr. Rawls to take the tower. Shockwave catches on Mr. Rawls, does get away. Timbers catches on towards him. They're throwing everything they can at Mr. Rawls, but he just backs away. Now the life's still working in his favor. That's going to be one down. They're going to push on through this one. Mima happily tanking up the turret. Death Sentence comes in. Flash play comes out. They're going to catch the three members as well. They did a really good dissonance there, but the damage still coming strong from Super Hot Crew. And Meteor Makers have to back away. They landed every skill shot they could but it wasn't enough damage. I've got a sneaky feeling that Charu Shockwave actually cast it on himself as I think Kubon dived out of range. But unfortunately, with driving the camera, I missed that to the left of the screen. So we'll have to see how it works out. But again, the wombo combo, the burst damage that is required to kill these carries is not there for Meet Your Makers. Super Hot Crew are too far ahead. They take their first inhibitor of the game, gonna back away. They've got themselves another massive amount of gold to spend. And just look at the story those gold differences tells. 4,000 gold difference in the top lane, you know, 2,500 in the mid lane, 80 carries, 4,000 gold. That's an infinity edge plus more between these two different uh, uh, players and champions. And it's too far gone. Right now, Meet Your Makers need to just slow this one down. They need to think about what do they do in game two? How do they prevent this happening? What do they need to change to make sure they don't get knocked out 0-2 and lose uh, that eighth and final spot in the LCS? And if it's the Super Hot Crew, just look at the stats, look at the team, look at the kills, the assists, the ratios they have. A perfect performance. Impaler, he's the only one really with the most deaths, of course, because he's using that song battery to get in amongst them. Top lane, Mimer, no deaths. Mid lane, Moops, no deaths. AD Carry, no deaths. And a 0-1-17 performance. 17. Just one off all of the kills that he has been involved in, Mixer. Fantastic performance from that support player. Really, this is a great, great start for Super Hot Crew. Meet your makers, they're going to have a lot to talk about. Probably during this phase right now, while they're waiting, while they're filling the time, they're probably discussing, okay, how are we going to change the strategy up? Because that's really all they can use this time for. They do manage to land a good shockwave. Moops will go down. That's their sixth kill of the game. Could they take down the huge tank of Mima? Of course not. Leon they throw no. straight out. The Lancer. That's still 2,000 HP. Now they catch Makata. They catch on Makata. Has to flush straight out of it. The box was thrown down from Mima, uh, from Mo Mixer, sorry. But look at this. Mr. Rales is in there. That's the damage. The culling coming out still doesn't do a great deal to Kubon, despite the fact he's got an infinity extra in the force and Bloodthirster. <laughs> it is a fair bit, though. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's going to allow that uh, Meet Your Makers to stick around. All the damage being focused on Kubon means that Makla, being untouched, can take down the tower. This is their third and final outer tower and a small rally of support here for Meet Your Makers. They're going to keep it up. Impaler with Assault and Battery. He could dive in if he wants to. Let's keep a close eye on him as the hook does not connect. So I don't think Super Hot Crew can defend this one. A good last ditch effort from Meet Your Makers, but they need a little bit more. They need that last oomph if they want to keep this going. Makla wants to tank the turret. He gets the turret. That's the fourth turret of the game for Meet Your Makers. A very good turnaround attack, honestly, from effectively nothing. A simple shockwave landing, getting the kill, gets themselves two towers. They could get Dragon as well. This is, is a stretch too far. This could be in trade for Baron though. They've started Dragon off. Makla decides to peel away, gets a lot, couple of uh, auto attacks left on it. Now Baron has respawned. Well, I think they'll be able to kill this thing before the members of Meet Your Makers can even get in range. As I do click Baron, there we go. At the moment, we are waiting for things to get underway. Oh, They're going to try and go in there. Him. Do not get in there. Instead, they get caught straight out, like you say. Deleted was, in fact, the word. Baron was picked up. And, well, just as there was a breath of hope for Meet Your Makers, Super Hot Crew, extinguish it. Yeah, Meet Your Makers were too late to react. I missed the kill off camera there as, as Moops just insta Gibbs Makate did use a full combo, all of his barrels plus Ignite. And now with the 5v4, Super Hot Crew, they're actually going to ignore the inhibitor. 
and put their sights down the Nexus turrets. And of course, the uh, Super Minions have been doing the work for them. That's going to be the second Nexus turret going down. The Nexus will be the target once Kubon goes down afterwards. He gets dropped down. Shockwave pulls in three members. It's not going to be enough, though. The damage is not coming on because Mr. Rales is focusing on the Nexus. It's the super hot crew that close out game one in this best of three series. The only thing you could criticize from the Super Hot crew in this matchup is they were a little bit behind in CS in lane. That is the only mistake that they made. And other than that, it was a phenomenal performance. Their ganks were good. Their rotations were good. They, they responded to map pressure phenomenally well. And it never felt like Nietzsche Makers really had any life in them in that mid game. Fantastic performance from Super Hot Crew, honestly. This, you just got to look down the stats and you can see you have 5 1 8. Moops finally died towards the end and got caught in that shockwave, of course. Mima, though, no deaths for him, of course. 4 0 12. We wondered about the Mondo selection up against Shivana, but Shivana, he went for the Blade of the Rune King at start, but he just wasn't tanky enough. And you only look at all he's got is a spirit visage. He had nothing to throw himself in that fight. You know, we saw looking at the OGN, you saw how Impact was throwing himself in there with that Randy Atomic, catching all the members, slowing them down. That would assist them, especially, especially with an Oriana, that shockwave. I completely agree. And I, I feel like